If you've ever seen or used Unreal Engine, then you may be aware of a material that is able to change or update based on the rotation of an object, sort of like something that you're seeing on the screen right now. This is extremely useful to art direct your scenes inside of your application without having to go through the process of retexturing an object based on the rotation of the scene, of, of it in the scene, and re-export all those textures and set up the materials and everything again. And in this case, I used it to create the moss on the top, mostly, and a little bit on the sides of this rock. And this is all done inside of Redshift, and I'm going to show you how you can set this all up. So I just have a quick scene, simple scene set up here. It's just a sun and sky rig with a plane and a sphere. So let's go ahead and create a Redshift material and open that on up. And what we're going to use to drive this entire material is going to be a redshift state node. Now, a state node is a very powerful node, and you can do all sorts of different cool things with it. If you click right here, you can see all the different types of data that you can get from the node. But for our purposes, we're just going to use the normal. And in redshift, the normals are from negative 1 to 1 in space, and we need those to be able to to use them to be in zero to one space. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use a change range node and it's gonna be the vector change range because we need the vector because it's going to have all three channels. So your X, Y, and Z directions inside of it. And it's gonna remap them all and we're gonna be able to bring out the specific channels. So in reference to the specific channels, we want, in my case, I want the up direction. So make sure that you're in world space on your object. If you use the move gizmo, you can see that the up is going to be green or Y, X would be your red and Z would be your blue. You can see that based on the gizmo in the bottom left corner right there. And so we're gonna use the green channel and to get the green channel specifically, we're going to use a color splitter node. So if we pipe this in, we now are able to access specifically the green or the up direction in world space. So from there, we want to use a ramp node and this is going to allow us to change the range of our texture or how much of our object is being affected by the texture. So this whole node tree is going to be driving the mask. So you would use this in a material blend. So if I just drag that in, we would use this as the layer one mask. If I just drag that in, see, we would have a blender one, blend one color or blend color one. That would be where you would wanna pipe this in. But for now, so we can visualize what we're doing, we're gonna drag the ramp into our surface and apply that to our sphere and just bring up our render view. So as you can see, we have our sphere here with our texture applied. And if I bring the shader graph back up, as I affect this ramp, it's going to affect our sphere. So in nature, the way things uh, are like applied to objects with the way textures or things grow on objects it's not a uniform line straight across the object like this it's going to have some breakup in it and it's not going to just go straight across or be a hard line so we want to kind of break that up as well and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a couple more ramp nodes so i'm going to drag two more ramp nodes out and the first ramp node that we set up initially is going to drive the overall amount of the object that's going to be masked. This second ramp node is going to control I, on, the, on the mask, I want the top, the very top, to remain straight white. I don't want any sort of breakup to happen on the very top of the object. So that's what the second ramp is going to control. And the third ramp is going to control the fall off of between the, uh, the first ramp and the very top of your object. So from there, we're going to use a couple of color layer nodes. So I'm going to drag two of those out. 
and I'm going to pipe in the first one, first ramp into the base color. I'm going to pipe the second ramp into the base color of the second one, and the third ramp into the layer one color of the second one as well. And then I'm going to set the blend node from normal to subtract. And we're just going to leave that there for now. The way we're going to break up this texture is going to be, or this mask, is going to be using a Maxon noise. So these are just your default noise inside of Maxon, or uh, inside of Cinema 4D. Um, and we're just going to drag that into our layer one color. And then from there, we're going to do our color layer into our layer one mask of our first color layer and drag that into the surface output. So right away, you're not going to see anything. And actually, if I just go ahead and disconnect that, you can see that our noise is going to completely override our ramp on the bottom, which isn't what we want, which is why we're using the second color layer here. But I'm going to go ahead and up the scale, maybe set it to something like three, just to give us a little bit uh, less of a noisy look to our breakup. I just want it to be a little more of large breakup rather than so noisy. So now I'm going to go ahead and pipe that back into our layer one mask. And as you can see, it got rid of everything. And that's because we need to affect these ramps right here. So as I drag this first ramp across, it's not going to do anything initially because this first ramp is going to be overriding that. So as I drag this up, you can see that it's affecting and you can still see the hard line where the initial ramp is at. And as I drag this up and down, it's going to affect the fall off of our uh, of the top of our object being straight white. So you want to keep this second ramp within the range of this first ramp and the third ramp within the range of the second ramp. So if I go ahead and drag the second ramp on up so it stays within our second or our, our first ramp, and then I'm going to go ahead and just drag this dot all the way over so that it's straight white on the very top of our object. And you can affect the fall off using this. You can see now the very top, only the very, very top is straight white, which is kind of what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and just affect this a little bit more. Just set that. So it's about at the same place as our initial ramp. And then from there, we're going to make this just a little bit more pronounced. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a col color correction node. Go ahead, pipe that in and bring this into our surface. Other thing's going to change initially because we have to affect these settings. And I'm just going to pump up the contrast here. And as I do that, you can start to see that we create this nice hard line, which again, probably isn't necessarily what you want. So we'll just keep it at a little bit of a gradation there, maybe change the gamma to get a little bit more of a of a gradation between the two so this overall is going to be the the mask for our material and it's not that hard to set up it's actually pretty straightforward um, once you kind of know how to do it and then you just have to play with these settings to affect the object so it's gonna be kind of hard to see, kind of hard to understand, but as I rotate this, you can actually, it is actually showing, you can see that as I rotate the object, it is updating and the texture is changing and staying on the top. No matter how much I rotate this, you can go on forever. It's going to always be on specifically the top. So I'm just gonna show you one of my other projects here, which was the demo animation that I that I had. And if I actually rewire this back up, it is just a little bit different than the, the texture that I just showed you or the material that I just showed you. Um, but it's essentially the same thing. I just didn't use the, the noise. I just played with different ramp combinations to get different looks and the noise just didn't seem to, to work the way I wanted it. So I didn't exactly use that in this one, but a good thing to note here is the way that I am doing the displacement. So 
whatever your last note is, you wanna drag that into a color invert. And the reason we wanna use a color invert is because if we just have our color correction, we're going to, um, we're, we can't plug that into the mask or the layer one color because we're going to need to mask out the, the height. We only want to affect specifically where the texture is going to show up. So we're going to use a color layer for our, our height texture, drag that into the base color, and then we're going to invert our mask so that we just get this look. So we want to, we can't just create a mask for the base color. So we have to set our layer one color to black, and then we have to invert our, our initial mask to make sure that we are only making the parts that the texture isn't affected by to be black. That's why this second color is, is black. And if you drag this in here now, if I drag this into the surface, you can see that only the top where that, um, that texture is actually located is being affected by the displacement. So just a interesting little tidbit there that you have to kind of think about when you're going to, to do the displacement. The, uh, the level from zero to one that you get with this node is going to affect how much it's being displaced. So black isn't going to be displaced at all. And then your white is going to be, full white will be displaced the most. So you got to kind of play with the masks to get what you want. But this is a simple setup to create a material that changes dynamically as you rotate your objects. You don't have to retexture them. It is very important to note that your texture that you're plugging in on top, so my, mo my moss texture right there, is a tiling texture. You do not want to texture your full object with a, a, with a separate program. It has to be a tiling texture because if I were to open up a texture, let's see if I can just open this up. If I, whoops, if I open this up, you can see that there is only the texture applied in where the UVs are placed, which is not what you want. You'll, you'll see everything that's in here if you do not have a tiling texture. If you have a tiling texture, this entire square is going to be um, applied across your, your surface. Um, and it's, it's not going to have any of this weird distortion, non-textured stuff going on. So very important to note that you must use a tiling texture as the top most texture that you're using this on, otherwise it will not work. But hopefully this, uh, this helps you out. Uh, it's a kind of simple, quick introduction into the state node and what you can do with it. There's a lot more that you can do with the state node, but this is just a, something super simple that allows you to art direct your scenes without having to go back and actually recreate all your textures and everything. Um, every time you want to make a different variation of the object. So hopefully this helped you out. Make sure you leave a comment if you have any questions. And I got some more tutorials coming, so make sure you subscribe and have a good day.